Hi there, it's good to greet you today, wherever you find yourselves. And today we come to the conclusion of our journey through Ruth. In fact, we've journeyed through all four chapters and today really is like a summary. So we'll also stop all through mm -hmm. four chapters of Ruth where we looked at the overall theme of hope and we looked at that in hope in suffering, hope in providence, hope in petition and hope in redemption. So we move first to chapter one and hope in suffering. So good morning. Yeah, so in chapter one, we met Naomi and Ruth and we started with the backdrop of no hope. There was a famine, they were fleeing the place that they lived and they needed, and Naomi had experienced the loss of her husband and her two sons. And so in this time when she had her daughters-in-law, she there was another famine and so she had to go back to Israel. And it's this where this is where we find her and Ruth. And Ruth decides to go with her instead of staying behind with her own family. So Ruth leaves everything that she knows, her family, her her heritage and her culture to go with Naomi to back to Israel. And so we thought about how we can be affected by when we suffer those times when it's very difficult for us. Do we harden up and become harsh and resistant or do we soften and allow God and others into our lives to help us through it. So the devastating effects that Naomi had gone through left her emotionally bereft and financially and materially as well. And her only two heirs and the hope of all of her income had died. And so there was nothing to support her. And so alone in this foreign land, she'd made that decision to go back with her daughters-in-law back to Israel where there was food and where there was more hope. And so that's where we found her traveling back and so we reflected upon how God does not bring the suffering upon us, but he journeys with us through those difficult times. And in doing so, he gives us that glimmer of hope. It's not always easy to keep our heads up. It's not even easy to look for those glimmers of hope sometimes. But it's much easier, we find, to wallow in that pit of despair and to stay there or even to give up. And it would have been really easy for Naomi to give up as well, but she didn't. She kept going, she made a decision to move forward and to go back to her homeland where God was providing for her people. And so we're encouraged to trust God as our first port of call. And through this story, Naomi thought of others. She gave her widowed daughters-in-law a blessing. She gave them the option mm -hmm. to leave if they wanted mm -hmm. and to, to have the chance to start a new life. And so we see in Naomi and in Ruth that even though they were suffering, they still wanted to give hope to others and they still wanted to think of others above themselves. And so in this chapter, we thought of the whole no hope and uh, that Naomi's suffering was very great and it se seemed that all hope had gone. We thought about the sacrificial blessing that she bestowed upon her daughters-in-law. And we also thought about Ruth's faithfulness and the fact that she stayed faithful to Naomi, even though it would have been easier for her to have stayed at home. Great. And so then we moved into chapter two, thinking about this idea of hope in providence, this unseen plan of God, God providing for us, God working out his purposes for us. But in sometimes, in a, maybe a lot of times, in ways that we don't even know mm. at the time because we cannot see it. And so we picked up this kind of phrase of um, it just so happened. Uh, as we look through this that that chapter, and so I'm just going to briefly overview again what those were. That it just so happened that Naomi and Ruth decided to return to Bethlehem at harvest time, and so able to receive food in that way. It just so happened that Naomi's family had all experienced famine and loss, except except Boaz, who had remained back there in Bethlehem. It just so happened that Boaz in that time had gained wealth, favor, influence. It just so happened that when Ruth decided to look for grain in a field, without knowing the law of Israel, there would be provision made for her and for the poor. And it just so happened that the field that she chose to go to belonged to the relative of Naomi, who was Boaz. It just so happened that the kindness of Boaz went beyond what Ruth was looking for. It just so happened that Boaz invited Ruth to eat with the fellow workers. It just so happened that extra provision was given to Ruth. It just so happened. 
Uh, so, wow, we can therefore put our hope in the plans uh, that God has for our lives, even when uh, the plans maybe are not yet revealed to us. When Naomi realises that God has been at work, when Ruth explains all that has happened, she then offers him all the praise. So let us respond in that way too. When we discover the just so happened moments in our lives and we see God is actually at work, even if at times we don't always clearly see it. In chapter three, we looked at hope in petition. Mm. So all about asking and asking in prayer. And we thought about replacing grief and suffering and no hope with the hope of seeking God in prayer. Mm. So we were considered to the part that God invites us to play in being the solution to our own situation. That even when we ask, sometimes God asks us to be part of the That's answer. So we're not taking on that victim mentality or being overwhelmed mm. by our problems, but we're able to take action in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And so Ruth and Naomi decide they're not just going to wait around and see what's going to happen, but they start to make plans and they start to move forward. And the plans involved asking Boaz to marry Ruth. Mm. And so we, we saw in the story how this all unfolded. And we thought about how we know that God is working amidst all of our problems. He's mm. working in the background and preparing the way. And we also know that he does prompt us to take those actions and, and he helps us to move forward. Yeah. If we are passive for too long, it becomes quite dangerous because we're just sitting back and not really taking action, not really taking control. And uh, sometimes we recognise that we're reluctant to move forward and we're sort of clutching onto God's hand very reluctantly and he's almost dragging us out of our situation. But when we do manage to take those little baby steps out of our situation, we find that we have that sense of satisfaction that we have taken control and that we have moved forward in God's strength. And so we just talked to really about how we keep praying in yeah. our situations and we just don't give up. So we might be praying for the same thing for a long time, but we just don't give up because God is in that and God answers our prayer. And so just like Naomi and Ruth, they kept asking and acting in the hope that they had glimpsed and they didn't give up. Absolutely. And so all that hope comes to fruition in the final chapter, chapter four, and we see hope in redemption. And we thought about redeeming our loyalty cards and different things, this idea that re what, when we understand what redemption means. And we saw this redemption come to completion for both Ruth and Naomi. And we considered the difference that, that, that it meant for those women as they had their lives restored and their hope realised. And also that this hope and the experience actually went beyond what they'd hoped for and <laughs> expected and demonstrated this, the heart of God that he does immeasurably more than we can dare to ask uh, uh, or imagine. And so in that chapter, we're then invited to reflect on the redemption in our own lives. That's freely available to us. We just need to make that decision to seek and receive it and accept it for ourselves. And like I say, we use the example of redeeming points on our loyalty cards. It's all there waiting for us, but we're not going to get the, uh, the prize, if you like, if we don't go and redeem those points. And the redemption is available to us all through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it's freely available. And we explored then the boundless love, grace and redemption of God. We recognise that Ruth was initially denied and boundaries were put up to redemption because of her race. Those outside Israel later in the God story uh, it were initially denied redemption because they were not seen as God's chosen people. And through the New Testament church we see this, this boundary being challenged and thought through and even removed as the gospel of Jesus Christ reaches beyond the people of Israel. And we also remarked how today we can often, sometimes without intention, um, set our own boundaries on who can be offered and who can receive the redemption of God. And so today, as we conclude this summary of Ruth, let us renew our hope mm -hmm. in the redemptive power of God in our own lives and in the lives of others, whoever they might be. And as we conclude this story, as we reflect then upon our current situation in which we find ourselves just now, may we find hope in our suffering that God walks with us. May we find hope in the unseen plan of God for our lives. May we find hope in seeking God in prayer and asking him to find us a way forward. 
and may we find and spread hope through the promise of God's redemption. And so today we just encourage you to be living as people of hope in today and for all days. Mm. And we hope that God has drawn close to you and we pray that he continues to walk with you every day. It's been great to journey with you through the story of Ruth. Next week uh, we'll um, be looking at our harvest and thinking what that all means for us today as we celebrate the goodness of God. Uh, but we pray God's presence and blessing with you. We pray the hope of God will live in your lives this week and in the weeks ahead. Amen. Amen.